All right, folks, we're in Atlanta today. Um, y'all already know by the thumbnail what we're doing. But thank y'all for coming to the channel to watch this. And this is one of my bucket list items I've wanted to do for a long time. I actually remember when this took place. I remember seeing this on the news. And um, we're talking about Mark Oren Barton. At the time of the events, he was 44 years old. We're going to take a step back, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about his uh, story. I just wanted to come to the locations where the events happened. And I wanted to show y'all all of that. And uh, so anyways, step back in Mark's life. Uh, he graduated from the University of South Carolina with a chemistry degree. There he met his uh, wife, Deborah. They eventually had two kids, um, Matthew and Elizabeth. So Mark was a military kid, you know, got moved around a lot. He blamed all of his problems on his family. He always, uh, made remarks about his father. Coming through life, he actually had a lot of problems. He was arrested for petty crimes and drugs and different things. And when he went to college, he got his degree in chemistry. He actually manufactured his own drugs. So upon graduating, he ends up marrying Deborah. They have the kids. And he starts his own business with his friends, TLC Enterprises. And uh, they're, they're manufacturing soap and things like that. I couldn't find a whole bunch of information on the company. But it's not very long after uh, the company is formed that he's actually fired from the company. He was the president. And at that time, we're talking, you know, early 90s. Um, he was making like $88,000 a year is what I read. That's a ton of money back then. So he, he was the only person in the family that worked a full-time job like that. I think the, his wife, Deborah was more of a housewife. And she took care of the kids and stuff like that. So she didn't really have any huge income coming in. So upon losing his job on that day, he actually broke into the facility, TLC facility, and stole a bunch of papers, stole a bunch of uh, disks and drives, and erased a bunch of stuff on their hard drives. And the people that uh, still worked there, owned the company or whatever, they knew who did it. They sent the police right to his house, and he ended up confessing, and uh, they came to an agreement, and they didn't press any charges on him or anything, but it ended up, what the police investigators ended up saying was, was they believed that it was a cover-up, that eventually, Mark was basically trying to hide information where it was going to be uh, get him in deeper trouble legally. So that's what he went in there and uh, erased. So the company ended up just pressing charges. I mean, ended up just dropping charges, and nothing ever became of it. Okay. So that moves us along into Mark's next career venture, where he got hired as a chemical salesman for a chemical company. And at this time, he's about 38, 39 years old, and he meets Leanne Lang, who's about 22 years old. Mark's personality, he's a very flirty kind of guy. And Leanne's personality, she's very, very flirty from what, I, from what I've read. They hit it off pretty quickly and begin having an affair, okay? Well, it's not long after this that Mark actually takes a trip with Leanne to North Carolina to meet some of her friends. They have dinner, and during this dinner, Mark tells all her friends how much he loves her and can basically professes his love for her and tells them that by October, he'll be free to get married. It's also important to note this time that Leanne's also married. So they return home from this trip, and just a few months later, Mark ends up getting a $600,000 life insurance policy on his wife. I read he actually tried to get a $1 million policy, and they wouldn't let him get it, but he got the $600,000 policy. Mark's wife, Deborah, actually uh, told friends that Mark had begun going to tenant beds and going to the gym and had been, you know, everything had just changed. You know, the signs of somebody having an affair when an immediate change like that, all the sign takes place, you know, it's a pretty telltale sign, one of the indicators, you know. Well, Mark was doing it and was not trying to hide it. So in September of 1993, Deborah and her mom leave out on a road trip going to Weiss Lake, Alabama for a camping trip. Just a few days later, they were discovered inside the camper, deceased. They had been attacked with an ax or a hatchet and Deborah had actually been hit in the head like some, they said almost like 20 times, that it was just bad as you can imagine, that's what it was. And of course, you know, Mark, of course, Mark being the husband, he's number one suspect, right? So they go to check him out, and uh, of course he's got an alibi where he was and everything and this and that, but they find blood in his car, okay? They tell him they're going to come back and get the DNA swabs off of the car, not to mess with it. Well, Mark was a chemist, don't forget. They sprayed luminol in his car, and it lit up, okay? 
I don't know why they didn't get the DNA right then. It doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. But they had mentioned to Mark about luminol, and he acted like he didn't even know what it was. And they thought that was kind of strange, him being a chemist, not knowing what luminol was. But anyways, they ended up coming back to get the DNA off of the, I think it was the ignition switch and a couple small spots here and there. And oops, Mark went and spilled a soda, which has got acid in it, and all the DNA content is gone. And Mark just, you know, his car was also clean too. He cleaned it meticulously. Everything that they said not to do, he did. So Mark ended up settling with the insurance company. They gave him $450,000, okay? With the stipulation that he had to start a trust fund for the kids for $150,000, which left Mark with $300,000, okay? A short time later, he ended up wanting to go into doing day trading. He wanted to trade stocks, volatile stocks, high-risk stuff. And he used two companies here in Atlanta. They're across the street from each other. All tech and momentum is who he used. I'm not going to get into all the all the individual specifics of everything because it's it's too much okay basically he lost everything he was horrible at it over the course of about four years from what i from what i can read he lost all of his three hundred thousand dollars and he lied to him and said it was worth much much more they don't check that but you just basically make a deposit which he deposited like fifty thousand dollars and then like a hundred thousand dollars with another company and they give you limitations on what you can trade so upon him losing all of his money, of course, he couldn't come to work anymore and he owed money. On the morning of July 29th, 1999, Mark calls up Momentum Securities and speaks to the guy that was his manager there. And he tells him, hey, at two, two to three o'clock today, I'm gonna come by and bring a check and uh, pay off my negative balance, begin working again. Well, at around 2.15, Mark arrives and he enters the building and asks for the manager and uh, without getting into all the details of it, Mark pulls out a Colt 1911 and a Glock 17. He tells one of his former colleagues as he enters the building, today's gonna be a bad day for trading. He was walking around systematically with one gun in each hand, shooting one at a time, left, right, left, right, looking people straight in the face. Some of the people he shot point blank some he shot at as they were running away. So upon exiting uh, Momentum Securities, he crosses the street in his van and comes to 3520, which is Alltech Securities, building number eight. I'm gonna show you that right now, okay? He walks in and does the exact same thing. He looks around, asks for certain people. When they come to the office to meet him, he begins shooting them, okay? A witness testifies that he walks around and telling people, I hope this doesn't ruin your trading day as he's shooting them. By the time he's done at Alltech, he's killed five more people and injured many more. So up to this point, he's killed nine people and injured several. So as the calls came in, they did not realize there was actually two shooting locations and that 3520 Piedmont, which is where I am right now, was actually a second location. They thought that the numbers were mixed up and all the shootings happened across the street at Momentum. But here at Alltech, which is building number eight, right here where I'm at now. Mark was entering his van as the phone calls came in. And he exited right there behind me. So before Mark Martin was able to exit the Piedmont Center, someone there recognized him. And shortly thereafter, they went into the HR department and pulled the files, got his name, number, address, and everything, gave it to the police. So in the four hour period where Mark was kind of not seen between like 2.30 and about seven o'clock, somewhere around there, at the four and a half hour window, cops were uh, headed over to a Stockbridge, Georgia apartment. And uh, when they got there, they found a very grisly scene. Mark had killed his two children and his current wife. Uh, upon entering the residence, they found a letter on the table and basically the gist of it, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna honor him by reading, reading that. Specifically what happened on uh, Tuesday, he had killed his wife. Uh, with a hammer. He had put her in the master bedroom closet in the floor, covered her with a blanket, some boxes, so if the kids had to be prowling around, they wouldn't find her. 
very next day on Wednesday, he did the same thing to his children and essentially would uh, put them back in the beds with some of their favorite toys. And um, I think he put a teddy bear on his daughter's chest and put a Game Boy on his son's chest and uh, covered him up in the bed real good. So uh, I guess that was his way of kind of justifying what he had done. He left letters beside each one of them saying how much he loved them, take care of them. And, uh, you know, it's, it's one of these things where I hate really talking. I feel like sometimes reading these things is almost like giving these, giving these guys glory and I don't want to do this. Um, but yeah, the, all three bodies were found in the apartment. And of course, you know, he was believed to have had a major part in his ex-wife and mother-in-law's uh, death also. So, you know, beside the nine that he killed at Piedmont Center, he killed the three there at his house on that week and then very possibly killed the two a few years back down at Smith Lake. So Mark Barton is not seen for about four, about four more hours, maybe five hours. And uh, he's spotted at Town Center Mall in Kennesaw, Georgia. And um, basically what happened was a security guard seen his van, didn't think anything of it. A lady was leaving one of the uh, shopping, one of the stores there doing some shopping. And Mark walked up on her said don't scream or I'll shoot you well she backed off a little bit she didn't scream Mark thought she was gonna run Mark said don't run or I'm gonna shoot you once again he uh, he didn't he didn't shoot her that time either so basically what he ended up doing was he hopped back in his van and took off and he headed up uh, to the town of Ackworth which is where I am right now and this is where uh, Mark's life is gonna end You'll see the sign back here behind me right now. It's currently a Walgreens. We're up here on the corner of Baker Road. I'm gonna spin this camera around and I'm gonna show you a uh, shot. And right here in this very parking lot is where Mark ended his life. He uh, pulled in here in the parking lot. The cops blocked him in. They demanded him to get out of his vehicle. Uh, he wasn't gonna go out like that. He had his two, uh, I'm gonna say pew pews with him. I can't say the other word because they'll block my, block my video here on uh, YouTube and won't monetize me, so. He had his two toys with him, and uh, he took his own uh, life with one of those toys right over here where I'm fixing to show you. folks we're here at uh, Sunrise Memorial Gardens in Lithia Springs Georgia it's a pretty good sized cemetery and uh, I don't have any idea where these graves are but uh, I didn't know that they're buried together the kids are I believe uh, Deborah's buried right beside them I know I know they're all three buried here but uh, there's not any information online. That head won't stop glowing. I gotta do something. Anyways, uh, I'm gonna search this place. Literally, I'm walking over all this <laughs> to find these graves. So I'll be back with y'all in a little bit when I find them, okay? I actually talked to a guy over here a while ago, a sheriff's deputy, and he told me he thinks this is where they're buried at, so. He said, just go down the hill here, and they're, they're on the end down there. So that's the only place I haven't searched in this whole big area here. So let's talk about it for a second. You know, this is a uh, very unnecessary tragedy. The, uh, Mark obviously had, almost said a bad word, Mark obviously had mental problems, okay? Let's start right there. So you can't really make sense out of mental problems, okay? So... It's one of those things, if you try, you leave yourself confused, you have to start right there, then everything else just kind of fades, because uh, he killed his whole family, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, yeah, it was greed, lust, whatever, he wanted something they didn't have, but then when he got that, he even killed them too, okay? 
and to even be able to kill somebody, I think you got mental problems. If you can physically kill somebody, I don't think you're of right mind, just like suicide. People say, oh, all these different excuses. I say, first of all, if you killed yourself, your mind ain't right, that's what I always say. I don't mean to get off on that, I'm sorry. I'll try to talk to y'all just like y'all are standing there in front of me. So I'm standing here at the grave right now. I didn't realize this. I didn't know why I didn't think about it, but Deborah's mom is buried right next to her. You gotta remember, they were, they were both killed at the same time. Yeah, they're buried right here beside each other, and then the kids are on either side of the ladies there. But um, I'm gonna give my two cents right quick. It really it hit me, man. I mean, I, I didn't really see them lined up like that. I'm gonna make this statement here from my own personal belief. I'm trying to influence y'all. But if y'all don't think Mark Barton didn't kill them too, also, you're crazy. They both got axes in the heads. And then the kids got hit in the head with a hammer. And then his second wife got hit in the head the way she did. If you don't think he killed all them people right there lined up like that, I don't understand why he didn't go ahead and admit it in the letter. When he wrote that crazy letter, what he did to everybody, then he says, I have no reason to lie now. But in my heart, I feel like all four of them people lined up right there. They got killed by getting hit in the head with something. Come on. We're common folk, okay? Y'all are the same as me. You've got enough sense to know better. When you see a family lined up like that right there, it'll hit you. What you call it in your feels? It'll hit you in your feels, okay? It hit me in mine, okay? I guarantee you that. I didn't expect to see it. I don't know why I knew it was, I knew the kids were side by side like that, but I didn't know that all four of them were lined up like that. It's like, bam, right in the face, man. folks we're at the uh, old valley grove primitive baptist church here in osceola georgia today and this is going to be the uh the grave place of uh, leanne vandiver which was mark barton's uh, second wife she was just 27 years old when she passed away and just for a reference point we are uh, about 175 miles south of atlanta right now this uh the filming of this takes place actually almost about a month after I filmed all the stuff up in Atlanta. I wasn't able to get down here and um, at that time I found myself doing some more stories in southern Georgia and then I'm going to Florida actually and I thought I would stop through and add this to the video. So I want to turn the camera around show you her grave now and I, I want to point out that on her grave the date of her death is marked as the 29th. That is the actual day of the shooting and the day they found her body but Mark describes in the letters, and she's buried quite a bit behind me. I, I would never discuss this right upon her grave. I think it's very disrespectful. But uh, the letter describes that she was uh, killed two days before that. And that's all I'm going to say about it here at the cemetery. But I'm going to walk up on the grave. I just wanted to point that out to you all, okay? All right, I'm going to turn it around and take you over there.
All right, folks, so my prayers go out to everyone in this one. It's not just going out to the family, okay? It's going out to everybody that was affected in this, all the people at the offices, even people that extended family or friends of. Prayers for all y'all, man. This, uh, this was a far-reaching event. I know it was a long time ago, but uh, it doesn't matter, okay? People still have pain from stuff like this. People still live with it every single day. But uh, we're going to end the video right here now, finally. And uh, I know I got a little long-winded. I'm sorry. But uh, thank you all for watching the video. You're already here, man. Like the video, please. Subscribe to the channel. It costs you nothing. Helps me out so much. I appreciate it. When you subscribe, I get to see that you subscribe to me. And I really do appreciate it. A lot of y'all, I'll find you on Facebook. Or That sounded kind of weird. I don't find you, but usually y'all find me on, on some social media platform. And I'll subscribe, you know, I'll, I'll add you as a friend or Instagram. I'll follow you or something like that. But you know what I mean. But anyways, we're wrapping this up. We'll catch y'all next time. Thanks for being with me. We'll see you.